All right, The Lies of Pinocchio, a game with a pretty interesting weapon assembly system, allowing for a wide variety of blade and handle combinations, uh, which we didn't make use of in the previous video and uh, neither in this one, so I'm not sure why I mentioned that. But in the previous video, we went through the game with a little stick as a law enforcing puppet, which is ironic since those are part of the puppet frenzy, obviously. In fact, those who fervently fought back against the puppets were chefs. And yeah, I know that sounds a bit kooky, but believe it or not, that is actually explicitly stated in game lore. Hmm, isn't that interesting? So that gave me the idea to find out what it would be like to go through the game as a puppet slaying master chef. Well, actually that's not how it happened at all. This run was suggested to me and it uh, went something like this. Well, what should I do? Um, chef? Huh. Well, at least it gave me some food for thought. Although my initial idea was to only use the chef's knife with fire items. But then I asked around a bit and apparently people enjoy a little bit of variety in their diet. So therefore let's add a little bit of flavor to it and make it an actual full course meal. Meaning we're going to cycle between three different weapons for each major boss fight. First we prep the meal with the chef's knife, then we cook the food with a grill on a stick, and finally the frozen feast so we have a nice crusty popsicle for dessert. And of course fire consumables and the flambeur's arm. Which I always assumed was about as effective as a pilot light, but who knows. Maybe it will come in handy at some point. I mean it is an arm so it ironically has a head start already in that respect. Alright, sounds like we have a recipe for an interesting playthrough, but I feel something is still missing. I mean obviously this has to be done in Nukem Plus, so just like starting a new restaurant in a sense, but using old ingredients? So apart from our already upgraded weapons and an appropriate outfit, we are going to start Nukem Plus completely fresh. Everything acquired in regular new game goes away. No amulets, only the defense parts you start with, and my level reverted back down to 10. In fact, let's take it even further. Hold on a second. Okay, so I even empty out my P organ. Now, I actually have never even done a full New Game Plus playthrough, but I'm sure that the scaling won't be that high, meaning it will be a piece of cake. Isn't that right? It's a brilliant plan. Is it? Yes, it's superb. There is, however, one slight flaw in the plan. Oh. You're the worst cook in the entire world. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. There are amoeba on Saturn who could boil a better egg than you. <laughs> okay, there is a slight possibility that I will end up eating some humble pie instead. Well, if you cannot take the heat, then stay out of the kitchen. Because when going through Lies of P, Nukin Plus Fresh Start, as a master chef, victory will not be handed to you on a silver platter. Alright everyone, sit down at the dinner table, put a napkin in your shirt and hold your utensils upright. Because here we are, fresh into Nukin Plus. Well, apart from our weapons of course. So, almost fresh. Fresh frozen. Fresh frozen out of the can. But even though we will have to make everything from scratch, I definitely feel like cooking up a storm and... Uh, oh, Yeah, that's less damage than I expected. On the first enemy of the game. Oh, and that's more damage than I expected. Well, then again, you also gain more Ergo on Nukem Plus, meaning that we can level up much faster. So that's probably not going to have much of an impact on the... Uh, uh, ooh. Uh-oh. Huh. Yeah, perhaps this was a bit of a half-baked idea. I mean, everything early game is both fire and slash damage resistant, and on Nukem Plus, without any levels into advance, not even fire bombs are that powerful. Of course, the true power of fire bombs is only revealed when you have 99 strength. And on top of all of that, of course, the lack of any P organ upgrades. So uh, yeah, this is going to be a slow cook rather than fast food. 
but probably even worse for your health. As I came to the realization that I never really had to figure out the tutorial boss's second phase moveset before. But hey, he might be a boss, but I'm a chef, so let's simmer down and let's see if I can whip something up. He does a double hop, followed by a double swing, and when he puts his head down, that's a hitbox in and of itself, but also a safe attack opportunity. Stay away from his backward swing, double follow up, and counter attack. A general three hit combo. Notice him slamming his head down again, so save attack opportunity. So all now we're slowly bringing this pot to a boil. It's not too bad, this approach might have needed a little extra time in the oven. But with enough patience we managed to get past the tutorial boss by making clever use of our cleaver. Unfortunately, that is merely the appetizer. We still have many courses ahead of us. There it is. The finest eating establishment ever established for eating. Oh no, fuck that. I'll get my old job back tomorrow. Cooking's dumb. You're a liar! You're a liar! LIAR! Now, a problem in this game is that everything combines into a rather questionable recipe. A rack of ribs way past the expiration date, which also applies to a very beefy boy that already turned green. A grilled Caesar salad of all things, even wrapped in tin foil later on. But also actually a quite nice pair of uh, buns. And speaking of which, my favorite prime cut of meat is a nice piece of ass. Well, it would have been if the hit detection on backstabs wasn't a complete load of ass as well. Yeah, it's the one thing in this game they definitely should fix at some point. Regardless, given that I'm also as stubborn as a mule, I still insist on going for backstabs almost exclusively against almost any NPC encounter. Because it still ends up being the most effective approach. But with all these questionable practices, I sure hope that the health inspector will go easy on me. No! No, with great mustache comes great responsibility. I'm Health Inspector Yellowtail. I'm officially closing down your restaurant. Well, if he's going to grill me on my malnutrition-inducing malpractices, I will just have to grill him right back. And as I explained before, the next weapon on the menu is the by now legendary barbecue blade. The holy grail of kitchen utensils. Which I never actually used before doing this run. But in all honesty, it's a really decent weapon with a good moveset and a pretty efficient fable art. Although that should have been plural, but I never ended up using the arguably even more efficient fable art of the handle itself, which is the guard parry. Which only costs a single fable slot and it combines a parry with a counter attack. Very effective, but I never made use of it. So I guess I kind of dropped the meatball on that one. Although given how much trouble I have getting the timing right in the first place, I suppose I wouldn't have gotten much use out of it. Now unfortunately, against puppets, you also don't get that much use out of fire damage. Although they are still susceptible to it. But as a general rule, this is the recipe for damage types in relation to the three variations of enemies in the game. However, it still allows me to add a little bit of extra spice to the fight. Oh fuck! Damn it, I want to get the stagger. No! Can't get away! Crap, now I didn't get the stagger again. No! Come on! Yes! I can't, I can't get it! What the fuck? No! <laughs> Damn it, that was... 
That was quite a, an intense fight for only the second uh, boss fight in this playthrough. Jesus, motherfucker. Uh huh. <laughs> I think fuck is my favorite Presbyterian phrase. And I think you're going to hear it quite a lot in this playthrough. <laughs> yeah, as you can notice, we have a lot on our plate here. As the scaling from new game to new game plus is pretty damn high in this game. But much more so because we're still at a low level and without P organ upgrades. But fortunately that changes now given that we can finally use our quartz and on top of that acquire some new ones in the next area. Also I chose to get the durability increasing talisman from the shovel knight because although weapon durability is actually rarely an issue in new game, apart from corrosion of course, but given how much longer the fights take this time around, it's now much more of an issue. Especially because our next weapon, the frozen feast, despite looking as sturdy as a brick, has much lower durability than most other weapons. And uh, to be fair, sticking a popsicle inside of an oven doesn't sound like the best approach here to begin with. But remember we also have our flambird's arm, and they do say to fight fire with fire. You're cooking in a burnt pan you fucking dick! Oh my god, leave it, leave it, leave it! Just fucking leave it! They're gonna blow fire in your face you fucking donkey! Yeah, then again most people say dumb shit all the time, myself included. So uh, no, uh, we're sticking with our very slow unwieldy weapon that because of our lack of stats doesn't even hit as hard as it potentially could. So uh, in a sense this weapon is one of the best and worst weapons in the game at the same time. With the right stats and even more importantly in the right hands, it can be absolutely devastating. The problem is that I have, uh, well I have neither. It's a bit like using a great hammer against the nameless king in DS3 when you've only fought it with daggers before. It's not like a great hammer is ineffective, but you cannot make use of the same attack opportunities. And that's exactly the same problem here. Whenever I would be able to sneak an attack in, with a fast weapon, this time around the boss would hit me first and thereby cancelling my attacks, given that there is no poison in this game. Now one of its fable arts is a hard hitting slow slash that does in fact have hyper armor, but it also costs free fable slots. And you can also sacrifice Fable slots to remove the crust which increases your attack speed. The thing is that also automatically happens when getting hits in and it doesn't exactly last a long time to begin with. But you know actually that wasn't even the worst thing. It's that I didn't choose to get the rising dodge upgrade. Because although the next update will make that a standard part of your moveset, that wasn't the case yet at this time. And given that this oversized oven boy has multiple attacks that can knock you flat on your ass and which are likely to hit me since I'm so often already in a slow attack animation or even more likely completely out of stamina, that can leave you absolutely boiling and steaming out of pure frustration. No! No! Oh, he does the white bar disappeared because of this stupid attack. Are you kidding me? That's fucking lame. That's fucking lame. I don't agree with that at all. Oh no! Eat my popsicle, you furnace fuck! Son of a fucking tap! Eh. Die! Stupid burn f furnace fuck yeah <laughs> that was only the third boss. Oh my god, that was so much harder than I thought it would be. <laughs> wow, yeah, uh, I can't say I feel like a master chef after that, given that it seems like I haven't mastered any of these fights yet. But hey, it uh, it's a living. I mean my occupation is at least something, whereas this lady's occupation is none. And although you might think that now we go from out of the frying pan and into the fire, however, 
Now we got through our first weapon rotation, we can switch back to the Chef's Knife. And we're finally facing a boss who is both weak to slash damage and fire damage. In fact, even the Flambert's Legion Arm could potentially have been very effective here. Emphasis on potential, because without any levels in advance, and none of the Legion damage increasing P organ upgrades, simply adding a fire buff to my cleaver seemed a bit more clever. So in that sense, using the Flambert's is like adding some garnish. It looks fancy, but it doesn't make any meaningful difference. At least not under these specific circumstances. It's too bad though that there's no sticky white stuff in this game like in Demon's Souls, otherwise we could have added some cream freeze. But despite all of that, I was actually doing really well. So far at least. Would be uh, quite a shame if that turned out to be nothing more than uh, just a flash in the pan. <laughs> Somehow it doesn't look like a challenge when we don't use Frozen Feast. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you have a point there, Alentos. This weapon is actually pretty good against this boss. Damn it, I need to get to this other side. That's better. I don't even see anything! Uh oh, wrong side. That's better. Fuck, Alicious, not good. I'm fucking up. No, I'm fucking up. Fuck, he delayed his attack. Okay, now I'm just messing up. Damn it, I had such a good first phase, and now I'm just fucking up completely. Uh oh, I'm afflicted with acid, shit. Damn it, I'm fucking up everything now. I didn't get the critical, but I did get a lot of damage in. I hate that move, because if he falls on top of you, you're immediately dead. <laughs> Fuck, not good. Ah! Uh, don't fuck up now. Wow. <laughs> okay. Well, that was not a very clean uh, second face. I guess it was a clean cut, if, uh, but not a very clean face. I should keep a cleaner kitchen than this, I guess. <laughs> Wow, that was uh, <laughs> that was very, very messy. The first phase was almost perfect. Well, almost. And uh, the second phase was just... Uh, yeah, kind of surprised that it was still a first try victory after all. But I'm happy I was able to provide the Archbishop with his last supper. Of course, for us, we still have many orders to expedite. And now, it's time for yet another kitchen nightmare. An even more hairy situation than finding a hair in your soup. Because if too many chefs spoil the broth, then a whole Brady bunch of bunny rabbits ruin the roast. You see, the thing is, I never even bothered to learn how to parry the big brother bunny and simply treated this fight as a battle of attrition, while relying on throwables for the little snuggle bunnies which are definitely not as snuggly on Nukem Plus, where they deal substantially more damage and require substantially more damage to take them out. And they might say that the slower they cook, the better the taste. But I kind of prefer my battles in little bite-sized snack format, 
to be uh, completely honest. So it might take a while before I can get these bunnies out of my hair. Oh fuck no! Fuck delicious. Oh whoa! Okay, good. Okay, we got a healing item back. Fuck, no! No! Get away! Getting close. Fuck off you, you fat, useless sack of fucking Yankee Danky doodle shite. We found it! The black dress! How was your soup? That's a wedding soup? That's to get him in the mood to get married. Jesus, I'd rather get fucking divorced. Well, even though Roasted Rabbit is not exactly a meal worthy of a king, we are going to change that as the final course of this rotation is against the king. Specifically one of puppets of course, not uh, the Burger King. I mean we're talking haute cuisine here after all, which is also why I initially avoided the fight with Ronald McDonald. At least for now. Obviously I wanted the quartz so I came back here later on. But now for the appropriate French cuisine. Well actually the opera house is more Italian, but the song is French. And there are some German and British influences in this city in general. I guess the Korean developers just regarded Europe as a giant melting pot of cultures. Or they took the American approach and just regarded the entire continent as a single country. Regardless, the Frozen Feast is not exactly the quality of flambéed cream belay against a fast moving enemy like Romeo. I mean in the first phase having slow attacks is quite manageable at least and the damage output is very good. I had to simply change my approach to certain attacks to give myself enough time to get a hit in. For example the double spin, I would dodge, do an R1, dodge again and then do a charge R2. But uh, yeah that doesn't help much when you can only survive for well about 10 seconds or so in the second phase. Especially because of the recovery time of the attack animation being so high that you already know that you're going to get hit like 2 seconds before it even happens. Because you can already tell that you will not be able to deflect or dodge in time. Well, just had to keep trying and figure out the right openings. So, let's see how this will pan out. Okay. Now I need the right opportunity. Yeah! Hey, what? I want the critical, what the hell? Oh, good thing. Okay, let's not get greedy now. Uh oh, the waterfall. Okay, I survived it. Okay, now, okay, let's... Fuck, ooh. Actually gave me some hyper armor. <laughs> okay, nice. Uh, yeah, this is definitely not the best weapon to use against uh, Romeo. In the first phase it was okay. In the second phase, yeah. But it was doable. You have to just play things very carefully. Really pick your uh, opportunities. And that even it means that you miss some opportunities, but that's okay. That's okay. So yeah, fighting Romeo with a popsicle was no piece of cake, but arguably even worse is the Jester mini boss down in the arcade. Which doesn't feature Pac-Man machines with joysticks covered in pizza grease. It's actually some sort of a mall for whatever reason. Didn't even know that the word arcade could be used like that, but whatever. And speaking of pizza, you might think that the pizza cutter would have been a suitable weapon for this run. But you know, the previous one was focused on electric buffs already. 
And of course, by that logic, you can record anything as FEMA appropriate if you're creative enough. Like, uh, this is a dinner plate, this is a donut, this is a chicken drumstick, this is salad dressing. And the muck that ruins your beautiful white chef's jacket is diarrhea from eating undercooked shrimp. And so when the pee got mixed with the poop, it smelled like a butt. But uh, back to the Jester mini boss. He is arguably harder than most of the actual bosses in the game. Especially his break effect ruins the effectiveness of healing items. And the designers were a bunch of jokers as well apparently. Because even though you can make use of Doom style monster infighting, it's apparently incredibly inconsistent when or even if the carcasses come out of their cages. And apparently bouncing off of walls with your weapon is inconsistent as well. But of course it will happen at the most crucial moment when it really really matters. Yeah, like being between a rock and a hard place or even more appropriate between two slices of an idiot sandwich. But after multiple attempts and after using some Batman style sneaking tactics, I was able to take this joker down. Which is interesting by the way because there are also Harley Quinn puppets and even a Bane style main boss that after being marinated in some cream not so fresh turns into Solomon Grundy. Or Champion Grundy. Champion Grundier. Ah, yeah, that works. This is the power of the oh wait, this extends his combo quite a bit, so I have to watch out. Oh, I literally set it and I'm not doing it. That is so press continue. <laughs> His tracking is much better in the second phase. Whoa! Ooh, I actually got wall cut. What the fuck? I was just... I was fucking up there. Okay, so let that's... Oh, that does pretty good damage. Yeah, run into the firebomb. <laughs> okay, nice. Oh, he, he, he attacks before. Watch out. He's definitely very tanky, but we're getting close. Oh, whoa! Oh, I got staggered, but he didn't have another attack, fortunately. <laughs> I don't want to fuck up now at this point. Okay, whew. That's a good fight, definitely a good fight. But he's very tanky. <laughs> he's beefy, but fortunately as a master chef I know how to deal with beef. Well, even though he's called a champion, I suppose he's still green because he didn't realize that you never bring your bare fist to a knife fight. But you know, after handling that amount of man meat, perhaps our next score should be a little easier to swallow. Something that's actually supposed to be colored green. And something you wouldn't just haphazardly throw into the microwave. Is there anything today that I ate that wasn't microwaved? The salad. The salad? You fucking donut. Of course you don't put oh, a fucking salad. A misprint on there, or is that me? Grilled Caesar salad? No. Really? The lettuce is grilled. Huh? Top it on the grill. You never heard of that? No. It no. hasn't hit London yet. <laughs> I think he's gonna love this salad. I mean, it's a grilled lettuce. I mean, can't go wrong. Grilled salad. Come on. It is grilled. You're still amazed. I'm shocked. I've never thought about it, but it's true. Like, wait, why are we grilling lettuce? No, no, fuck no, no, no. No, go on. Oh. 
Even when you think everything goes well, then just one mistake and then it's it's over. Could you make me a Waldorf salad? Well, I think we're just out of Waldorf. <laughs> oh! Just in time with my... No! Why? Unbelievable. Yeah. <laughs> I can't do it. I can't do it. Blue fairy bones, bread, salad, pepper. If I have to memorize a single order, I think I'm gonna explode. Now, I want you to empty your mind. Empty my mind? Empty your mind of everything that doesn't have to do with fine dining. Fine dining and breathing. Okay. Damn it, I... Whoa, how the hell is it? Critical... No! Oh, I got it, I got it, I got it. Alright. Oh, whoa, fuck. Die! That's die already. Okay, well, that was, <laughs> well, that was the salad. French crepe delicious. I think I'm going carnivore after that horrendously hazardous herbivore feeding frenzy wrapped in thick layers of aluminum foil. Oh, wow, that is such a painful fight, even on regular new game, to be honest, but even worse on Nukem Plus. But at least now we get a little bit of a break, because although we do have to switch back to our not too trusty crusty popsicle, it actually didn't take that long to put Captain Calamari here back on ice. Although he does suddenly hit really damn hard on Nukem Plus. However, there was a specific amulet that I wasn't wearing this time when I probably should have. Damn it, my weapon is about to break. Whoa! Oh, my weapon is broken! Uh oh. Uh, then Legion Arm time, I guess. And I have my firebombs. Oh! One more firebomb! No! I need to get one firebomb! Oh, whoa! Apparently I hit. Oh, hey, whoa, whoa! Don't. You're not supposed to stay alive. Okay. But other than that, it's arguably one of the easier fights in the game. And surprisingly, it's not even a multi-phase fight. Ah, well, isn't that something? Well, uh, don't gorge yourself on sweet victory just yet. Because not only are the remaining fights double courses, but before that, the Bunny Brady Bunch is back for a big belly-bloating bunny buffet. And to be honest, I'm kind of sick to my stomach by now. So rather than another portion of reheated rabbit roast, Given that we're switching back to the chef's knife, I'm just going to cut them into red bits and pieces and then throw them directly into the trash. And speaking of throwing and trash, other than my knife, I tried to get as much mileage out of my fuel throwables as I could 
And then I used the big pile of bunny blocking trash bags to bunny block this trash boss so that I could finally get some actual meaningful use out of my Flambert's lesion arm. Because this melted cheese tactic is actually pretty damn effective. Well, to be honest, it would have been a lot more effective if I actually had my legion magazines equipped. But fortunately, by now I had the automatic regen ability from the skill tree. And I must also say that is some sturdy trash indeed. But the point is that I can't say that I felt bad for adding some nice melted cheese to my least favorite fight in this game. And on top of that, they are the ones who chose to attack me after rightfully defending myself. So hey, if you cannot dish it out, then you will become the dish instead. Would you like some cheese on that, sir? <laughs> well, unfortunately we don't have any cheese for Milk Mummy, or technically we have, since we could potentially have used the Perfection Grindstone for the second phase. Which is kind of a shame that I didn't maybe, because I just can't get the damn timing right on a lightning fast dash attack, which ironically goes faster than the actual lightning bolts. Now someone did suggest that you could time it based on when the final bolt hits her, but that didn't seem consistent at all and is also based on the amount of distance between you and her to begin with. And that is of course just the start of the second phase. If you've seen the baton run then you know that I got through that fight without even knowing what was going on half the time. But of course with the amount of damage she does in Nukem Plus, yeah then my lack of experience with this fight became very apparent. Now the first phase is not that much of an issue as you can play things rather safely. But during the second phase I just had so much trouble figuring out the actual patterns in the moveset. In fact this was definitely the point that made me decide that my next playthrough in this game should be a level 10 playthrough. Preferably even with additional restrictions so that I will be forced to really learn these fights for real. Because the barbecue blade was not a problem here as it did more than sufficient amounts of damage. But the problem was that I could hardly get any attacks in at all. And due to the lack of shot pots, I couldn't quickly make her stagger when her life bar turns white. And finding the opportunity for a charge or two attack uh, was easier said than done. So I settled on playing defensively and focused on blocking rather than parrying or dodging, aided by the guard increasing grindstone, so that I could focus on surviving while slowly whittling down her health bar, by getting a few sneak attacks in here and there, and by bouncing as many lightning bolts back as I could. And I definitely had to make sure that I would be at full health to survive the flash dash. But yeah, I really should do a level 10 run where I cannot just fall back on anything at all. Don't know when exactly that will be, but that's definitely what my next playthrough in this game will be. I don't hit her! What the fuck, dude? I don't know what that is. I literally don't know what that was. No. And now I have her. <laughs> you see what I uh, said before about the charge to attack? That's bad. <laughs> well, she has the bakery, I have the restaurant. Well, we certainly made some additional room for the final courses after Lexativia. So now it's finally time to give Manus his just desserts with the frozen feast, given that he is uh, kind of a bad egg. Which is made worse by his uh, kind of silly looking Humpty Dumpty form. And to be honest that's kind of a throwaway first phase to begin with. In my opinion they should have just removed that part altogether. But hey at least the cutscene is pretty epic with the religious imagery. Yeah what could this possibly be a reference to? I just cannot put my finger on it. But for me, victory would not be handed down from above. Because unfortunately, just like with Lexativia before, I kind of have a hard time recognizing what Menace even does in the second phase. Specifically, what counts as an attack and what counts as him just, uh, well, uh, flailing around. What I mainly ended up doing was uh, trying to outrun his red jump attack, which leaves him vulnerable for a charge or two. And fortunately, he tends to do that attack quite often. But you know, all in all, this is yet another example of a fight that is going to be quite an obstacle when I'm going to do it at level 10, but which will at least give me the right opportunity to learn it. However, the one fight that applies to the most, much more than I ever could have expected, is the Nameless Puppet. Which sounds probably strange to a lot of people, but I literally had no idea how difficult of a fight this was. 
Because I'm not exactly sure how this happened, whether it was just dumb luck or the electric coil stick being extremely effective against him. But on my first playthrough, I got close to beating him on my first attempt, and then I did in fact beat him on my second attempt. And in the baton run, he went down on the third attempt. And this might all sound like a good thing, but it paradoxically really wasn't. Because this means that I only fought him a total of 5 times before. Not 5 victories in 5 playthroughs mind you, but 5 actual fights altogether. In fact my initial reaction to this boss fight was that it needed a buff or even a third phase. Well uh, let me tell you that I no longer hold that opinion. Because it turns out that this boss fight is extremely difficult and complex. I simply for whatever reason never experienced it like that before. So now I had to face him with a subpar weapon due to his slash and fire resistance and his immense health pool on Nuking Plus including a massively increased damage output even when you block his attacks. It was very evident that I was completely unprepared for this fight given that I had no grasp on his moveset like uh, well at all. Unfortunately I was running out of time for this playthrough already so it wasn't exactly the right time to start learning it. But it pretty much solidified that my next playthrough in this game should be a level 10 run. But to end this particular run, I actually decided to switch back to the Frozen Feast, which might sound really bizarre, but the thing is that that weapon at least gave me a high damage output. I even resorted to using the Perfection Grindstone in the second phase to ensure a stagger, and even then I still had a very hard time to brute force my way through. So yeah, it's kinda like ending a meal with a massive fart at the end. Which sounds more satisfying than I mean it, of course. It's the, well, it's more if someone else would. Okay, well. But the thing is that hopefully next time I will be able to truly take in and digest this fight, including the ones before them. Because the way it turned out this time was definitely a recipe for disaster. Huh? That was a full. He was discharged. What the fuck? What the fuck was that? It was charged and it didn't work. Fuck! I couldn't get away in time. No, he does it twice again. What the fuck? No! Die! Just burn away! <laughs> burn this entire fucking boss fight away! Fucking hell! Oh. God damn it! I'm done with this playthrough. <laughs> and there we have it. Lies of P as a master chef. Well, I can definitely say, stick a fork in it, because I'm done. Yes, but, uh, but the shift does actually stop at nine. So why does your shift stop at nine, huh? Have you got something terminal? <laughs> no, no, but that's when he, in fact, stops. Uh -huh.